Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. We've had some unexpected snow here and I'm on my one trip today to go and buy some food from a shop so we can feed ourselves. But today's video, ignoring all that, I want to talk about MQTT and how you can use it on an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, today we're going to be talking about MQTT, which is one of the kind of backbones of the uh, IoT Internet of Things, how small sensors and microcontrollers can talk to each other, so all this data that's been collected can be uh, analysed and shared on a smartphone, in the cloud, whatever. Now MQTT stands for MQ Telemetry Transport. Now a common mistake is people think the MQ part stands for something like, you know, maybe message queue. Actually, there are no message queues in uh, MQTT, uh, and the MQ was actually just part of a product suite that actually was part of IBM at the time that this thing was invented. So it was queued the MQ telemetry transport, and the MQ doesn't actually really stand for anything other than it was a brand name that was being used at the time in IBM. Now there are some interesting features about MQTT. It's a publish subscribe model, which we'll talk about in detail uh, in a few moments. It's very lightweight. I'm gonna show you a version running on an Arduino, so it doesn't need very much in uh, terms of computing power or RAM to actually get it working. As I said, it's designed for constrained device, like devices like microcontrollers, like Arduinos or the Raspberry Pi, Pi and that makes it therefore ideal for uh, IoT, the Internet of Things. So what is transport in the terms of telemetry transport? If we think about people, then let's say you've got some people down here, they want to get to this place up here and we go via a transport system, whether that's buses or taxis or cars or trains or trams, bicycles, walking, we have a transport system which transports people from one place to another. So if we look in terms of IoT, basically there are messages that we want to go from one place to another place, to a destination, and we need a means of transport, a pipe that you can send these messages down. And this runs over TCP IP, so we're talking Ethernet, Wi-Fi, over the internet, so that these small devices can send this information across the internet, across a local area network, at, at, from one device to another. So here I've got a simple example. I've got a smartphone here, and I've got a light bulb, both of them can connect to my local Wi-Fi and I want them to talk to each other. Well, how do we do that? Well, if we want to send a message, for example, that says, you know, switch the light bulb on or off from the smartphone, then we're going to need a way to do it. And MQTT provides that way. You can send an on message or an off message over MQTT and it gets from the smartphone to the light bulb. The problem we've got is that most addressing nowadays is dynamic. So what is the IP address of the light bulb? Imagine if you had to set up all the light bulbs in your house to have fixed IP addresses. You need to keep a, you know, a document of address, all the addresses that you've allocated and kind of start doing your own network administration. And does it change? If you change the light bulb, you know, what's the new light bulb going to be? And will, if, you, you know, when, if you're using D, uh, DHCP, is it coming from a router? Will it change tomorrow? Does your smartphone, everything's dynamic. It's very hard to know how you get this connection between these two because today Today the setup might be one thing and tomorrow it might be different. And this is where an MQTT server, sometimes I use the word broker, comes into it. Basically I can send a message from the smartphone over to this server, this gateway that's running on your network and then that sends it over to the light bulb. And this thing here has a fixed IP address. Uh, so you've got this running on a piece of hardware, could be a desktop, could be a Raspberry Pi, which is what I'm running it on. And this has got a static IP address on your network and everything else has got dynamic IP addresses. But as long as you all know the address of the gateway, so you know the address of this broker, then the messages can go apart because this connects to this. So the smartphone connects to the Raspberry Pi, the, the light bulb connects to the Raspberry Pi, doesn't matter what addresses they've got, as long as they can connect, then the Raspberry Pi knows the addresses because they've already said, hey, we're here, and then it can start routing the messages between them. And so there are two modes inside of MQTT, and these are very important. There's the publisher, a device that sends, that publishes things, and there's a subscriber, a device that wants to receive that information, and that's what it's like in real world. You have a magazine publisher, or a newspaper publisher, or a website publisher, and we are subscribers, viewers, readers of those things. We like to see what information is being put out. And in this case, it might be a light bulb, might be a temperature sensor, 
whatever and it's publishing data and someone else wants to receive that data and is interested in it. So let's take the idea of a temperature sensor. A temperature sensor connects to the MQTT server as a publisher, says, hey, I'm here. And it starts publishing every few minutes, whatever the setup is, the current temperature in, in, the, in the living room, for example. And then the smartphone might connect to the same MQTT server, this gateway, as a subscriber, say, I'm interested, it registers interest, I'm interested in data from that temperature sensor. And then whenever the temperature sensor publishes something, the smartphone will receive it because the MQTT server broker makes sure that everyone that's registered an interest in that thing will receive that data. So the messages only go to the devices that want to hear about them. If I don't want to hear about the temperature, but I do want to hear about the status of a light bulb or the status of an alarm system, then you can configure which uh, topics you're interested in. Again, the idea of publishing, I'm interested in a particular topic. And so the temperature sensor connects to the MQTT server as a publisher. It publishes every N minutes and it publishes it on the topic called living room temperature. So every time it sends that piece of information about the temperature, it's tagged, attached to it, is this topic saying, this is a living room temperature topic message related to that. And then the smartphone, likewise connected to the same subscribe, to the same server, and it says, I'm interested in all information that is connected to the living room temperature. So it knows then that it needs to uh, receive that information. So whenever the temperature sensor publishes something to living room temperature, the smartphone will receive it because they're both connected, uh, interested in the same topic. So let's look at the idea of a light bulb. This one's a bit more complicated. The bulb connects to the MQTT server as a publisher, saying it's gonna publish under the topic of bulb status. And it also connects as a subscriber saying, I'm interested in any bulb commands. So one of them is publishing the status and one of them is receiving the commands. And the smartphone does the opposite. The smartphone connects to the MQTT server as a publisher saying, I'm gonna publish commands. I'm sending out commands and I'm gonna be a subscriber to find out about the bulb status. So I want to hear about the bulb status. So to switch on the light, the smartphone sends the on command. It could send one, it could send on, it could send turn on, whatever you decide, with inside the topic of bulb command. Then the light receives the on message as it's a subscriber to bulb command. It switches itself on and then it sends a lit message with the topic bulb status. Then the smartphone receives the lit message as it is a subscriber to bulb, uh, bulb status. So let's look at that as a diagram. Here's the smartphone. It says, I'm a publisher of bulb command and a subscriber of bulb status. The light bulb says, I'm a publisher of bulb status and I'm a subscriber of bulb command. And then the smartphone sends an on command inside the bulb command uh, uh, topic. Because it's inside that topic and the light bulb is a subscriber of that topic, it arrives at the light bulb, the light bulb switches itself on, it then sends back a lit under bulb status, and then the bulb status finally gets back over to the smartphone because the smartphone is a subscriber of bulb status. So the smartphone can know it's issued a command and effectively gets a response back saying, yes, I've, I've switched on. But of course, because this is a subscribe publish model, you can actually have multiple devices subscribing or publishing. So for example, here, our smartphone is as before, it's a publisher of bold command and a subscriber of bold state, bulb status and the light bulb the opposite. We've got another phone down here, which is just a subscriber of bulb status. So the same thing happens. You can send the on command, the on command goes to the light bulb, the light bulb sends back lit on bulb status. But because now there are two subscribers to bulb status, there's another message sent to the other smartphone. So on its app, on its interface, it can show that the light bulb has been lit up even though it wasn't the actual device that issued that command in the first place. At this point, I just want to just recommend a course to this Linux Power User Bundle. We're going to be using the Raspberry Pi in a minute, so maybe you need to brush up on your Linux skills. This is only $19 at the moment. If you want to get this course, it looks like you're going to get lots of interesting stuff. Linux alternative to Windows applications, Linux for beginners, Linux command line essentials, learn Linux in five days and level up your career. Only $19. Not only will you level up your career, not only will you learn something, you'll also help out this channel as this is an affiliate affiliate link, link in the description below. Okay, so what we can do is go over to a Raspberry Pi and we're gonna first of all install an MQTT server called Mosquito. 
Okay, and to do that, you just do uh, sudo apt update, sudo app install mosquito and mosquito clients, and then we're gonna run the mosquito uh, server. So I'm assuming you know how to do that. You're familiar with installing apps on the Raspberry Pi. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a subscriber and a publisher. And so this one here is gonna say, I'm gonna have three windows open, one for the server, one for the subscriber, one for the publisher. This one says, I am interested in anything under the topic Gary, minus T for topic. And then we're gonna publish on the topic Gary, the message hello. And we'll see that it goes through the server and arrives at the uh, subscriber. So let's switch over to the Raspberry Pi and do that now. Okay, so here we are on the Raspberry Pi. In the middle window, I'm going to run the Mosquito server. So there it is running. It's just basically said I've started up and I'm listening. And then on the left hand, right hand side here, I'm going to run this command. These are some of the clients that come Mosquito Sub and Mosquito Pub are clients. And I'm basically saying I'm interested in anything to do with the topic Gary. And it just sits there now waiting to hear on the topic Gary and the server just showed us that their client connected there. Then over here, what I'm gonna say is I want to publish something, I'm a publisher on the topic Gary and I'm gonna say hello. As soon as you hit that, it goes through the server and we can see here hello has come up because I'm interested in messages on the Gary topic and I can repeat that as many times as I like and it will just keep sending and we can send uh, other things as well. Hi. Hey, you know, whatever. And, and they all come up here on the subscriber. So this uh, MQTT server is basically making sure that the, anything that's published on the topic Gary gets through. Now, if I change the topic here to, you know, uh, Bob, we're doing this for Bob, then it gets sent to the server, but nothing over here because this subscriber is not interested in messages with the topic of Bob, nothing to do with me, I don't care, I don't want to hear about it. Only when we say this is for Gary, then it actually can turn up over here. Okay, so that's a very, very simple inside the command line. Look at how you can publish data, you can subscribe to data, in, and using Mosquito as a broker, as a gateway to make sure those things get uh, rooted around to the right places. Now, you can also use uh, MQTT uh, apps, for example, clients on Android. So there's one I have here that I've been using. I quite like it. I'm not affiliated with this in any way. It's just one of the ones I tested out and actually it's not that uh, bad at all. So we're going to open up this now and show how we can connect to the same broker and send messages on the uh, topic of, of Gary. Okay, so here I've already entered into the app and I've set it up to say that I'm connecting to that uh, Raspberry Pi. And now you can actually build your own little user interface. Here we're gonna say add a panel. We're going to add a text log. And what we're gonna say is uh, I'm interested, or the panel's name, we'll call it log. And the topic, of course, I'm interested in is Gary. And one thing to notice is that it is case sensitive. All through MQTT, the topic names are case sensitive. And so we've got this little log here and I've, because I know this quite well, I know that you can go into advanced option, you can make this a bit bigger. So we'll make it six lines, let's say, rather than just two. So there is a log of Gary. Now, if we go back to the Raspberry Pi here and publish something now on Gary, we can see that it appears here and it's appeared inside of the other subscriber on the Raspberry Pi. Let's make this a bit more unique. Uh, let's just say two question mark. Is it coming to two places? Yes, look at that. It's arrived in both subscribers. So if you have multiple subscribers, they can both, uh, they will both receive because they're subscribing to this topic, which in this case was Gary. Now, another thing I can do inside of this Android app is I can create a button, for example. Let's just call it um, button. Okay, and the topic again is Gary. That's very important. And we're going to have a payload of, let's say, uh, button uh, pressed. Okay, exclamation mark. That's what we're going to say. So every time this button is pressed on here. Now, the interesting thing is, is that we are now going to send this on uh, Gary. Uh, and of course, we're a subscriber here on the Android app to Gary. So when we hit button, we're going to have button press comes up in our little log there, here. And it comes up on the subscriber in the Raspberry Pi. So now we've got a, a way of sending things, uh, publishing things down here. And we're actually seeing that's coming up on the, because uh, I'm a subscriber to the channel Gary. So you can actually build up quite a, an interesting interface. Look at all the different things you can do here. And you can get them to do things with uh, MQTT. Now, I also want to show you how you can use it on an Arduino. What I've got here, I've got an Arduino with a basic button on it. 
Uh, I won't show you how to build that. There's lots of tutorials on the internet for building that. It's basically a button, a resistor, and you basically just need to connect it up to the right pins, a pin for detecting the GPIO and for the power. Okay, and so I'm gonna have that button and it connects up. I've got an Arduino code on here, which got an MQTT client on it. All of this will be inside of my GitHub repository and it connects to the same Raspberry Pi uh, connect to the same Raspberry Pi uh, broker MQTT server so that we can see a, a, an Arduino talking to it. Now, in the Arduino, what we're going to do is we're going to have two channel uh, topics, Arduino simple and Arduino command. Two things noted, again, case sensitive because I'm using Arduino now all in lowercase, only when I use Gary in uppercase. And you can actually have kind of like subtopics. So here it's Arduino slash simple, Arduino slash command. And that actually can be, you can actually develop this scheme quite well. And there are ways of, of subscribing to wild cards and, and things like that. We won't talk about that now, but it basically allows us to say, well, okay, this is the Arduino, uh, you know, send channel. This is the Arduino receive channel, effectively, the subscriber, the publisher, and you can kind of divide up your, your topics inside of the, uh, the uh, MQTT um, broker so that it's much more organized, much more uh, sort of delineated. And what we're gonna do is inside command, we're gonna send on and off and if that happens, the LED on the Arduino here will also switch on or off. And if I press the button, it will send something on simple so that the message appears uh, inside of or subscribers to simple. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so what we're going to do over here on our subscriber is now we're going to subscribe to Arduino slash simple. Okay, so that we uh, can find out uh, the things that are going on there. And what happens is when I press the button now on the Arduino, then that's actually gonna sh send a message on Arduino Simple. And we can see as a subscriber to it, it sends you the button and the button count. It tells you how many times it's been pressed since the program has been running. So there we go. And also over on this side, we can actually now send a message uh, on Arduino command. Okay, and we can send the message uh, on. And that will allow us to turn the LED on, on the Arduino, it's now on. And then if we send off, we can turn it off again, on, off. And that is a way, like we're controlling a light bulb, we're effectively controlling our own little light bulb there. And of course we can do all this from the uh, Android uh, client. So let's go back into our uh, Android client there and have a look. So we'll get rid of our, our existing panels here. And what we'll do now is we'll create a panel which will be a log again. Uh, and this one we'll just call log. But what we're interested in now is Arduino slash simple. That's what we want to receive. Remember it's case sensitive. So now if we press our button, we should see the button count also coming up here inside of the app. And it's also of course coming up on the client on the Raspberry Pi, which is also subscribed to the same topic. And now we can actually create a, a switch here, turning on our light bulb on and off, so we'll just call it uh, switch. And the topic is Arduino slash, and look, you've got to remember that it's the case sensitive there, command. Okay, and we want, when we turn it on, we want to send the word on. When we turn it off, we want to send the word off. Okay, and then we create that now. And then now here, we can flick the switch and we can turn the light on and off on the Arduino, like that. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do consider giving it a thumbs up and why not subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. Now, don't forget, I have the Gary Explains newsletter and if you want to receive that, which will also not only cover what's going on here on the Gary Explains channel, it will also cover things that I found interesting on the internet in the most recent while. And so maybe you'll find some things that are uh, useful and educating. Okay, to do that, go over to garyexplains.com and sign up there on the form. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.